My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Wednesday, November 25th, the day before Thanksgiving. So, um, and uh, again, as we have been going through the week, last two week days we've had martyrs. Again, we have a martyr, St. Catherine of Alexandria, but I'll get to that in a few minutes. Let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who gave St. Catherine of Alexandria to your people as a virgin and an invincible martyr, grant that through her intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the Scripture. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw in heaven another sign, great and awe-inspiring, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for through them God's fury is accomplished. Then I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. On the sea of glass were standing those who had won the victory over the beast and its, and its image and the number that signified its name. They were holding God's harps, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O God of the nations, who will not fear you, Lord, or glorify your name. For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, great and wonderful are all your works, Lord Almighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy name. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord Mighty God. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness, trying toward the house of Israel. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord, mighty God. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands and mountains shout with them for joy. Great and wonderful are all the, your works, Lord, mighty God. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the people with equity. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord, mighty God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Remain faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons. They will have you led before kings and governors because of your my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, 
you will secure your lives. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Catherine of Alexandria, virgin and martyr. Catherine, at age 18, angered Emperor Maximus for questioning his cruelty and the worship of false gods. When all her attempts to persuade, when all his attempts to persuade her to deny Christ failed, and various tortures were no, of no end, he ordered her to be beheaded. The Acts of St. Catherine's report her body uh, was carried by angels to Mount Sinai, where a church and monastery were built in her honor. She is patroness of young maidens and female students. St. Catherine's, by the way, is still there on Mount Sinai. Um, you can see it. I've been there. Great story, though. St. Saint Catherine of Alexandra, martyr, and at 18, at a very young age. So, very important. This week's readings and commemor commemorations are challenging, are they not? Day after day, we remember persecutions and saints who were killed because of their belief in Christ. Uh, this, this isn't a great lead into Thanksgiving, is it? I mean, Thanksgiving, we, we're thinking of family and you know, happiness and getting together and so on. But maybe this is a good lead into Thanksgiving because might these difficult readings and painful history help us to be more grateful for the abundant gifts that God is giving us in our lives? That's hard sometimes to say when there's a pandemic going on, but you know, many of us are, are working from home or doing things that, you know, and, and still seeing family. Might we approach tomorrow's banquet, tomorrow's Thanksgiving with a grateful generosity of spirit, given that we most likely have not experienced firsthand the persecution of any of our spiritual ancestors, none of the ones we've heard about the last three days. The psalmist commands us to give thanks for God's wonderful deeds and his mighty acts. Every element of creation, from the deepest seas to the highest mountains, join with us in that praise. Isn't that beautiful language? How then might we see Thanksgiving, tomorrow's banquet, with new perspective? What if, for us, too, death isn't the end of the story? See, and that's always the crux. Death isn't the end of the story. That's how you can get by death and, and torture. Certainly, those martyrs believed they would be with Christ after death, as Christ reminds us. And yes, this is paradoxical. They will put some of you to death, but not a hair of your head will be destroyed. They will put some of you to death, not a hair on your head will be destroyed. Like John's kind of allegorical language here in, at the very end of the Bible, uh, this can be difficult to comprehend. Ultimately, however, we do not need to understand it. We don't? No, no. Instead, we need to have faith. As Jesus promises, if we come under persecution, he will provide us the words that we need to speak. How many times have we gotten into tense situations where we've rehearsed what we were going to say over and over and over again, and then when we got around to saying it, it just sounded stupid. I have that, have, have that happen in a number of occasions where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting this, I'm going into a tense situation, and I rehearse what I'm going to say, and I get into the situation, it's like, I don't want to say that. That doesn't sound right. That isn't what's going on here, you know? And so that's critically important. In Jesus, as Jesus has promised if we do come under persecution, he will provide the words we need to speak. Let us find the words today to give thanks to our spiritual ancestors and remember their faithfulness as we sit down to our own heavenly banquets tomorrow and every day thereafter. So my brothers and sisters, I challenge you to do that. I challenge you tomorrow as you sit down in front of your, your table of food which I would imagine most of the people that are hearing this are going to have a bountiful meal tomorrow, even within the whole pandemic situation. But I challenge you, sit down, be thankful for all the great things that you have in this world and how lucky we are. And know that even as good as life can be at this level, there's a better level waiting for us. A very happy Thanksgiving to all of you, very great blessings to all of your families and a blessing upon that meal that you're about to have. Amen? Amen.
we have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern with relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, for we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us come together and pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil and deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring our Lord that what your son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in share. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. We will have a Liturgy of the Word service tomorrow for Thanksgiving, but right now, for those of you who I may not catch tomorrow, I wish you a very blessed and happy Thanksgiving and a very safe holiday weekend. Thank you. God bless.